Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this warmer than it was in Arizona City Day. <laughs> A couple of things to announce. First of all, we are not going to move into the church next Sunday. I can't hear you. I think it needs to be tilted up a little bit. We are not going to be moving into the church next Sunday. Uh, the council has decided that we want to be perfectly safe before we move into the church, so it might be two or three Sundays from now. So we're going to meet outside at the same time next Sunday. And uh, we've had two deaths in our parish. Uh, Sig, Mel Sig Melvick died on Wednesday, and Pastor John wife Julie died on Thursday uh, so uh, we include those people in our prayers also uh, some of you may know my wife got COVID and I'm still healthy I tested negative the last time I got tested and I'm going to be tested again tomorrow but uh, we've been living in opposite sides of the house she's in the back of the house I'm in the front of the house we've been staying away from each other so hopefully uh, I won't contact it, but uh, it's a long story how she got it. Uh, somebody in the quilting room was sick but didn't tell her about it, and so my wife was very angry with that person, but uh, and she's not one to get angry. Uh, I think that's the announcements we have. So we begin with our uh, confession we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we can we continue with the confession of forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all these errors known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our gathering song. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company they shall return here. With weeping they shall come they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satif satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is uh, read responsibly. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. God has established peace on your borders and satisfied you with the finest sweet. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday of Christmas is written in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightened everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, 
who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to teach you all how to become theologians today. Remember last Sunday we read from Luke's Gospel about Jesus as a child being dedicated to God? Well, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptic Gospels because synoptic means they look at Jesus through one eye. In other words, they begin with Jesus as the human being born of a mother and go to where Jesus is God. John's gospel is just the opposite. It starts with Jesus as God who became flesh and lived among us. And if you read through John's gospel you will see that Jesus is always in control because Jesus is God. In John's gospel Jesus goes from being God to being human. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus goes from being human to being God. That's why they're so different. Now, the word theologian comes from two Greek words. Theos, which means God, and logos, which means word. So if you speak words about God, you are a theologian. So we're all theologians today. So as we are all theologians, we look at light and darkness in the scripture. Remember in Genesis 2, or Genesis 1 rather, when God said, let there be light and creation came to be. It was at midnight when the angel of death passed over the houses of the Hebrews and killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. It was night when Jesus was born and the angels went to the shepherds at night. To, to announce the birth of the Savior. It was at night when Jesus was betrayed by a kiss from Judas. Even though Jesus was crucified in the middle of the day, when he died, it became dark. And it was early in the morning before sunrise when the women went to the tomb and found the tomb empty and Jesus had arisen. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Now in the world that we live in today, there's a lot of darkness. Uh, there's a lot of COVID going around. Uh, there's other illnesses going around. So we can say we live in a fairly dark world right now. But John says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. That light is Jesus. And I'm asking you today to think about how you reflect the light of Jesus in your life. How is it that you are a follower of Jesus? And how does our church reflect the light of Jesus in the darkness of our world? Elton Trueblood said 40 years ago, much of the problem of the present situation of evangelism is that many who want to be part of Christ's cause cannot feel at home in any form the modern church takes. They are looking for bold fellowship and what they find is a complacent society concerned to an absurd degree with its own internal politics and so unimaginative as to suggest that the world can be saved by three hymns and a sermon. 
Well, that's a pretty strong indictment of the church. So I ask, how the bright light of Christ shines in our church today? We are told in John's Gospel, from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. Grace upon grace means love and peace and justice and mercy and forgiveness. We need to follow those instructions from Jesus. We need to help people know that we as the church are looking at forgiving and caring and loving and, and being at peace and bringing justice. Again, Trueblood says, what the church represents is not a repository of unchanging truth, but an open-ended search for God's will in our lives, both individually and in redemptive fellowship. We enter a new year this year. It's got to be better than the last year. We, we will make some decisions about a pastor for our congregation eventually. We have a lot to look forward to, but we have to remember that we are the light of the world that brightens the world around us. So let us remember to be that light. And as we gather as, as church, we are reminded that Jesus is our light and our truth and our love. And he carries us through no matter what happens to us. Whether we die of COVID or whether we die of something else, God has promised us that he is always with us. So let us remember that God's son, Jesus Christ, has promised to always be with us. And Christmas lasts for 12 days until the 6th of January. But as I said last Sunday, Christmas ought to be every day of the year because Jesus is with us continually throughout our lives. Amen. Now, we sang of our, we sang the, the hymn of the day. Uh, well, we tried to sing it at Arizona City and nobody knew it. So we're going to change the hymn of the day and we're going to sing one verse of joy to the world. pray for the whole people of God and for our country and for our world and our congregational response will be hear our prayer almighty God be with your church in this new year that we might trust in your presence through these difficult times as we struggle with the pandemic Lord in your mercy be with our country as we prepare for prepare for a new president and vice president that we might heal our nation and conquer the COVID virus. Lord, in your mercy. Be with our whole world as we face the challenges before us. Lord, in your mercy. Be with all those who have grieved the loss of loved ones, especially be with Elaine and the family of Sig Melvick. Be with Sandy and Ina and Roger, Dick, Joanne, Patrick, Patricia, Phil, Brenda, John, Pastor John and his family, Ruth, Steve, and Susie, and all that we name before us either out loud or silently at this time.
Be with all who suffer in any way, Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, does everybody have communion? If you don't have it in the cars, uh, we'll pass it out to you. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord accompany you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing song.